Hey guys, today is February 10th, and I'm here at the gym with Gina. We're gonna be hitting a leg and chest day. And that's like not something that's like in my split, but um, yesterday I was supposed to be my leg day and I skipped out. Yeah, yesterday I was supposed to be my leg day and I skipped out. And so I just thought I'd combine both today and just hit like, normally it would be like legs and shoulders or like chest and triceps, but instead I'm just gonna be doing legs and chest together today and then tomorrow I'll be going back to my normal <coughs> split, which is tomorrow's gonna, should be back and triceps. So we're good. But what we're gonna do first is squats. So we're just gonna warm up. Ooh. <coughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I like to start with the bar and then work my way up. Yeah, so we're gonna start off with the bar and slowly work our way up. Your form's still good. Yeah, so for Gina, I'll probably just do a 25. But for me, go up in increments of like 45s or plate. So I'm just gonna put on 225 so I can easily take off. But yeah, again, we're just gonna be warming up to our working weights. Taking off one. Ooh, look at that form. Crazy. But yeah, so it was. Yesterday was supposed to be my quad focused leg day. So even today, we're gonna be doing mainly quad stuff. Probably five different exercises and three sets each. Yes, right. How many? Just do like five. <clears throat> so once you get closer to like that weight where you know you you might fail around three reps, we're gonna start hitting three then. But for her, she should be able to hit five comfortably with this. One more. Ooh. I did four. That's five. My max ever for three was 375, 385. Probably can't even do that right now. Probably only hit like 365 for three. And I'm gonna go for just three. This should be easy though. Here we go. Let's go. Yo, you thought move quick. I move quick, I move quick. For me though, move freaking slow. It's gonna add a... Bro, I look so Asian right now. It's crazy. This is gonna be 345, 3. And it should be easy too. Well, not easy, but like, I should be able to get it. Here we go. Oh, yup. Here we go for Gina. This is gonna be <clears throat> 355. If she hits this, PR. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Easy, easy, you got it. She can't even hear me right now. Come on. Come on. One more. Not all me. Wait, you definitely could have got that. So for me, instead of 345, I'm gonna bump it up. So if I do a 10 and a 5 on top of that, I'm gonna use clips because I'm not confident in myself. Oh, where's that other 5 right here? Oh, 
If I can't hit this, I'm gonna be really sad. Oh, yep. So Gina's actually gonna go for a pier right now. This is gonna be one. 65. I'm gonna do my best to not to let her work it, work through it, and like not touch it at all. I'm just gonna get her position first. Okay, yeah, here we go. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. Okay, yeah, I think, I think Gina could have got it, but she's gonna get it next time. But I'm gonna do a single for this. This is a uh, three, what's 35 plus, three, what's 70 plus 13? That's 385. So this is gonna be 385 for a one. I should be able to hit this. Okay, let's go. Did I go down the way? Okay, yeah, we'll see on the footage, but now let's hit a, uh, I think we're just gonna move over to leg press now. We're gonna be doing leg press. And aiming for like eight to 12 reps or failing with an eight to 12. If you want to really focus it more on your quads, putting your feet lower on the pad will make it more quad dominant. I told this to Gina already, but I should tell you guys too, but uh, I'm going to switch over back to my regular... <sighs> Sorry, I'll hit myself first. Basically what I was saying earlier to Gina was uh, this past couple of months to a year, I kind of switched up the way I work out to going from like power building to like um, kind of strictly sticking more to like bodybuilding style and being more, working out more like a scientific base lifter. Well honestly, I hate working out that way and I, honestly, I got a lot weaker doing working out like that. So I'm switching back to my normal Switching back to the way I usually work out, which is a, uh, I usually start off with a heavy compound lift, or not heavy compound lift, but a low, a low rep, a low volume, high weight compound lift, and then as I go through the workout, I'll slowly up my reps, and then focus more on bodybuilding style towards the end after hitting like a heavier lift first. So like for example, today we hit squats as the first lift, and I went for three, and then um, now we're going into this, and I'm going for more like eight to twelve, and then. Um, after that, we're gonna be probably do it. We're probably gonna do leg extensions for again, like eight to 12, maybe even more. But uh, basically that's kind of the whole point of like power building, which is like first going for strength. And then after you, you did all the strength based movements, you're gonna slowly work your way into doing more volume. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing that from now on again. But honestly, I enjoy working out like that a lot more and I see more progress in my strength while doing that. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing from now on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm cramping. Yeah, that was weird. I started cramping up, but uh, here we go. Next set. We're gonna do three sets of this. Again, I'm going to failure, failing within the eight to 12 rep range. We'll start off with my left leg this time. Ugh. <sighs> 
Uh. Okay, let me hit my set real quick and then we'll move over to leg extensions. Here we go. Moving on. Okay, so yeah, same thing. Yeah, so if you have a spot like that, your partner can like, make sure you can still get that full, the full reps, even past failure. But since <laughs> Gina walked away, I'm just gonna keep going. So I can't really move at all. Like that. After this, we're gonna do leg extensions and then calf raises and done with legs. And then I'm gonna hit chest while you do your stair climb and cargo stuff. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, one more, one more. Wow. You're doing all of it. Wow. You're doing all of it. So? Okay, now, I'll see you, right? I'll see you, okay, yeah. Now move over to leg extensions. So for this thing too, leg extensions, you can do the same thing where you kind of like, keep going. Where you can kind of like help them go through the full range or you can do partials. So like, same thing I did with the hamstring curls where like you keep trying to go until you can barely get any range in with it with any trap. So like I said, I'll show you guys how to do it with no spot. But uh like this, try to get that full range. Make sure you go high enough where you can get a full squeeze in your quads. I'm gonna go high in the way on the next one. Here we go. Last set. Frick. Okay, now, moving over to calf raises. I'm gonna hit 
This is my last thing for legs. Some calf raises. I'm probably gonna do like five sets of this. And then we're gonna move over to chest. I really like to go slow and controlled for calf raises. And then if I feel like I can't get a full rep, I'll just kind of like bounce, rip it out. After this, we're gonna be going straight into chest, warming up our shoulder and our rotator cuff, and then going into a, a flat bench. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna start off with a compound, so. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so after hitting these calf raises, the first thing I'm gonna do is going through compound lift, like I said earlier. We're gonna be hitting a flat bench, probably for sets of five, three to, somewhere from between three to five, three to six. And then uh, after that, Go into maybe some like incline dumbbells and incline flies. Yeah, I really like to focus more on upper chest. So, the other side of this. Yeah, as I'm doing these, I'm like switching my toe variations. So sometimes I'll be like pigeon toe where my toes would be pointed together and then sometimes I'll do be doing um, what's called penguin feet where like your toes are faced the opposite way and <clears throat> each as you do it like as you do each variation you're gonna be targeting different parts of your calf but here we go again I'm really just ready to go and start hitting chest just trying to get this over with Fourth set. Yeah, last set of this. Now we're gonna move it over to the chest. There you go, last one. It's really light, just need a plate. Just kind of bring it out like that. Yeah, we're done. Let's go to chest. You know, I'm really gonna do kind of like warm a rotator like that. I'll do this, I'll grab a cable, pull it that way, and then I'm gonna stay on the cable and do like a one single arm flies and push downs just to warm up my chest and my tricep as well. But that's what I'm gonna be doing for like a minute or two. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna warm my chest a little bit. Flat bench first, because it's our first movement for chest, we're gonna work our way up to our working weight. But here we go. I feel like I'm already pretty warm, but. My goal weight to hit is gonna be two, cause this is 225. If I add a 10 and a five, that'll be a 255. So if I can hit 255 for five for three sets, then that'll be best case scenario, but I'll probably hit five for my first set and then four and then three or something, but we'll see. <clears throat> when you're benching, what you want is to make sure your feet are like, you're pushing your feet into the floor to get leg drive. And then the only thing on the bench would be your butt and then your upper back. Those are the only things that are touching the bench. So you should be able to feel like, <clears throat> you should be able to put your hand in between your lower back and the bench. There should be like an arc. And then from there, the bar path movement isn't gonna be straight up and down. It's gonna be actually like slightly at a, like a slight slope going from like, when the bar is touching your chest, it'll be right at your like, your nipple level or lower chest. And then when you're, uh, <clears throat> and then when you're at the top of the rep, the bar should be like hovering over your upper chest to your collarbone. But I feel like that is like perfect form. And obviously you don't want to flare your elbows like wide like that, because then you're going to be using a lot more frontal delt. You want to keep your elbows tucked in at like a 45 degree angle. Here we go. Still working my way into my working set, but this should be, this should be easy for five. Yeah. <sighs> 
and that should be 255. So my first working set, if I can do three sets of this for five, I should be chilling. Dang, I couldn't even get four. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go lower on the weight. Yeah, that Loki sucked. Uh, yeah, last time I hit chest, I was able to hit 255 for five. Man, I couldn't even get, th I couldn't even get four. But the bar pass movement was like off again, so maybe that's part of it. Here we go, for five. Let's get one more set and then move on to dumbbells. Okay, yeah, we're done with bench. I was gonna do one more, but that last rep kind of hurt my shoulder a little bit. Okay, yeah, now we're here by the dumbbells. Because we already hit our first chest movement, I don't really need a warm up. And I'm gonna start with 80s, or let's do 85s. And if I can do more than seven, then I'll go up. Here we go, first set. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll move up. We moved up to the 90s. And again, we're gonna go for like seven. After this, we'll do dumbbell incline flies with the same, yeah, with an incline. But yeah, here we go. Second set. Again, a good tip would be to grip the dumbbells as hard as you can. Okay, but here we go. I know I only hit, I think that was six, but I'll just stick to this weight and do one more set. Okay, here we go, last set. Man, that was only five. Oh well, now let's do some uh, some flies. I grabbed some 50s, and for this one, I'm gonna really gonna go slow and controlled. Really find that deep stretch, and then squeeze all the way through. I feel like for most people, when you get to a certain point on the uh, concentric, you're gonna like kind of lose all the tension in your chest, and it kind of just like gets flat. But you want to see like your chest rise and fall throughout the rep. You're really not getting a good squeeze, so. When it comes to any movement, whether it's legs, back, whatever, the two most important things is the squeeze, the concentric, and the eccentric, which is the, the stretch. So getting a good stretch and a good squeeze is what's really gonna be most beneficial. Here we go, first set. Like that. I can already feel a really good stretch on the bottom.
Yeah, that was the first set. There were two more. When I'm doing like a pec deck, I do feel a better contraction, but I feel a way better stretch doing it with free weights like this. Second set. One more of those. Here we go. Last set. Let's sit. And I'll move over to that machine. And I'm gonna be ripping it out as many as I can. And then even if I can't get a full range, I'm gonna keep going until I like barely have any range with any trip. But something like this. a little lower so I can get more in my next one. Here we go, second set. We'll just do one more. Yeah, we'll finish off with dips after this. Here we go, last set. I'm dropping it. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna hit dips now. Just gonna stick with body weight for three sets. Going to failure. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go, second set. Again, when you're hitting dips, if you want to focus it more on your, your chest, all you want to do is lean forward 
and your body will be at like an angle like this. So, but if you're more upright, you're hitting more tricep. Yeah, I'll just do one more and then call it for today. So here we are, last set, and then we're gonna go pose. Yeah, All right, we're done. Okay guys, that's the end of the workout. Um, like I said earlier, I never really pair up legs with like another bigger muscle group like chest or back just because by the time I'm done with legs, I'm already pretty fatigued. So I usually, if I do pair up another muscle group with legs, it's usually just shoulders or arms. Just because I don't have shorts on right now, I'm just gonna pose with my upper body. And my leg pump's already gone anyway, so there's really no point. But yeah, here we go, hold on. Yeah, that's it. Okay, yeah, I'm done with the posing now. Um, just to add on what I said earlier about my workout routine or how I'm gonna be um, approaching my workouts now, I am gonna be going for more strength slash bodybuilding. So like, like I said, I'll start off with a compound, do lower rep ranges, and then work my way into like the high rep range and doing more volume. And then while I'm doing that, it's probably gonna be more isolated movements. But yeah, when I work out like that though, I'm able to actually do a lot more sets and, and I can actually add in more exercises just because when you're not going so intense, and like, let's say for example, when you're going for that higher weight, lower rep range, like I'm not able to really add in partials or go for, um, basically I can't really fatigue my muscle as quickly just because I'm doing such like a low rep range in the beginning and then working my way up. And then as I work my way up, I'll start to um, get more fatigued when I'm doing like the higher rep range. So that's like kind of difference between like when people say like junk volume to do a lot of working sets and you're or maybe like you're doing like five to seven different workouts just for one muscle group and hitting five working sets each time. You're probably not you're probably not working out as intense as you should be. That's why people say like, oh, when, when people post their workouts and they're doing like a lot of volume or a lot of, a lot of sets, they're like, it's like junk volume because you can hit that you can hit that level of fatigue a lot quicker as long as you're, um, every set you're hitting is gonna be a lot more intense. So if you watch people like Sam Silik where he's like going to failure and then adding partials on top of that and like <clears throat> basically going to the point where like he literally can't move the weight at all anymore. And then when you're working out like that, you only need about one or two working sets and maybe like a couple different exercises for you to really feel um, that same amount of fatigue that you would when you're like hitting a whole bunch of volume than you would when you're hitting a whole bunch of different sets and not going to like that failure point. When I say failure, I mean like as intense as like someone like Sam Silk works out. So my previously when I would work out, I wouldn't go that intense and I would kind of hit a weight where, um, or I wouldn't really work out that intensely. So I would kind of fail maybe one rep shy of failure or like if I know I can't hit another rep then um, or another full range rep then I would just like stop right there and that's how I kind of like push my workouts and I think I'm going to go back to that just because when I'm working out like that I'm also able to really 
build up my strength consistently. And when I'm working out like really intensely like that, for some reason I haven't really seen much progress in terms of like strength. So that's the reason why I'm kind of switching back to doing this whole like power building style where I'm like starting off with his low sets, sorry, starting off with low rep, high weight, and then like slowly bringing up the rep range while uh, moving into more like isolated movements. So that's kind of how I go about it. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys from now on. I hope that helps you guys out too, because people will start DMing me and sending me their like full workout routine, sending me how many sets and reps they're hitting. And they ask me like, do you think this amount of sets is good or this amount of reps is good or whatever. But like in reality, if your workouts are more intense and the rep range that you're, you're picking out is like, pushing to a point of failure and then maybe you're adding partials on top of that, you'll be able to get fatigued and see the same amount of progress a lot, see the same amount of progress in a workout that's a lot shorter, as long as your intensity is a lot higher. So that's how you should kind of like go about your workouts. After this, we're gonna be going home and me and Gina are gonna be eating some, what is it, brisket? Yeah. Yeah, so after this, we're gonna be heading home and Gina's, me and Gina are gonna be eating some brisket at my house and we're gonna be grilling it up. And once my little brother gets home, I'm gonna ask him to cut my hair. That's the end of the work. Uh, that's the end of the video. If there's anything that you guys also have any questions about, please DM me or comment down below so that my next video I can discuss that. But for today's topic, I guess it'll just be junk volume versus intensity. But yeah, that's it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys made this far into the video, thanks for watching. But yeah, me and Jay are gonna head home now. We're gonna go eat. See you guys. Gina actually has some stuff to do, so she's not eating with me. But uh, I'm here, I'm gonna be just eating up some brisket with some rice. Yeah, so we have some pre-made rice. I'm just gonna pop in the microwave real quick. Hey guys, I'm home right now. Gina's a little busy, so we're not able to eat together, but still gonna be cooking the meat, like I said. So this is just the brisket. I'm just gonna clear out the box. There's not that much left. Just to add on from what I was talking about earlier, when I was talking about um, volume versus intensity. So intensity isn't determined by the amount of volume you're hitting. So as long as you're pushing yourself to failure, and then if you're able to go beyond that, which I mean by like adding partials, or if you have a spot that to push you to do more reps, you pass failure at like getting assisted reps. That's one way to think about it. But when you're setting up your workout, I think of what you should be really doing is just listening to your body rather than just like, you know, like, going in thinking you're gonna be hitting all these different workouts and these different amount of sets and whatever. I think what you should be doing is going in, um, know what you wanna hit, what know what you wanna target, so a muscle group. And then as you're hitting that muscle group or trying to find workouts to focus on that muscle group that's open, um, you're gonna be listening to your body and like feeling how fatigued you are. And depending on how fatigued you are, you're gonna continue, add more sets in or like maybe drop the weight or drop the amount of sets or drop the amount of reps or whatever. You should just be really just feeling out your body the entire time. And if you don't know how to do that, um, what you what you want to look for for indicators is like, let's say um, there's something where you normally can hit a lot more weight on, right? And then you go into it, and then your the amount of weight you're hitting is just trash. Like it's like way lower, or like you're not even feeling the squeeze or anything. Then you're probably your body's probably telling you, hey, like I'm pretty fatigued now. Like it's it's time to stop. Versus uh, no. Oh rather than like, hey, let's, let's keep going, you know? That's like a, probably the biggest indicator for you to, you know? Uh, that's probably the biggest indicator that your body's telling you like, hey, this is, this is good enough, this is a good point. And I think if you go beyond that and you just keep doing more after that, there's gonna be a lot more negative effects to building muscle than there is uh, positive. So just listen to your body, know when to stop and know when to keep going, know when to drop the weight, know when to add more volume, etc. But um, like I said, now that I'm changing back to my normal workout routine, I probably will end up doing more sets and more um, <clears throat> more sets per workout just because now that I'm not gonna be going past failure and doing like a lower rep range, just slowly work my way up, I don't really get fatigued until um, going more into my uh, higher rep range plus higher intensity um, isolated movements, so. You'll see what I mean throughout the um, as the weeks go on. So when I post more videos, and you guys see what I'm talking about during my uh, workouts. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. All I'm gonna do is eat this meal, 
and then wait for my brother to come home and cut my hair. And so I might look a little different by my next video, but uh, yeah, that's it. If you guys are gonna have any questions, shoot me a DM on Instagram. There's gonna be a link to my Instagram <laughs> down in the description. If you guys are coming from straight from YouTube, um, I also have a TikTok where I do live workouts a couple times a week, and I'll be posting videos of. I'll also be posting different workouts that I do, and I never really hit the same exact workout over and over. I mean, I guess it will be pretty similar, but I'll be adding in different things, or maybe I'll, the, the order will be different, but I try to switch it up as many times as I can. Again, if you guys are interested in that, my TikTok link will also be down in the description. And yeah, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. See you guys.